an early morning blast. Something is like boom, and then the fire is start. Followed by flames 20 feet high, more than a dozen people hospitalized. They said that he's in critical condition, so like nobody can like talk to him. And several more still missing. Tonight, we talked to families impacted and the firefighters who fought to save their lives. There was a lot of fire coming out of the second and third story windows. There was a lot of debris in the street. And the first thing I saw was a gentleman hanging out of the window. Yeah, what a New Year's Day it's been. We have live team coverage tonight. Jay Cole's talk with firefighters who were first on the scene. Our Joe, Joe Mason talked with families that have loved ones who are in the hospital. Well, let's start with Eric Connor in the newsroom with the latest on the investigation tonight. Eric. Guys, 14 people were hurt in this morning's explosion. Six of them critically. A representative of the Somali community at the Social Advocacy Center says four people are still unaccounted for because they're not at the hospital or with family. This blast happened just after 8 this morning in the 500 block of Cedar Avenue South when it was just a few degrees below zero. Flames were shooting 20 feet into the air when the first of 50 firefighters responded. From Chopper 5, you can see the top stories of the building have collapsed. There is a grocery store on the bottom floor and the top two levels have apartments and there is a mosque next door. You could see the smoke for miles. Drivers on I-94 even drove through the smoke this morning. The water used to fight the fire has created ice sculptures around just about everything. Abdi Salam Adam is the board chair of the Islamic Civic Society of America. He says the mosque is one of the first places in Minnesota the Somali community worshipped. But as he puts it, the mosque and the building next door can be replaced. Our presence also with the people, that's what we are concerned about most. You know, property can be replaced, but it's the people that matters at this point. I mean, this whole area is very significant to the community. But that area has the mosque, it has Palmas Bar as well, as well as a grocery store. But what, what we're worried about right now is the other victims. It's really tragic and really um, unexpected, and, uh, but we have faith in God. Firefighters will be out at the scene all night trying to figure out what caused the explosion. They tell us the building was last inspected in 2012 and had no issues. Centerpoint Energy says there were no natural gas leaks in the neighborhood. Portions of that very busy area will be closed tomorrow, so plan your commute accordingly. Jess? All right, Eric, thanks. One Minneapolis firefighter told us it looked like a war zone. Firefighters say the scene was chaotic with bodies in the street, people jumping from windows, and flames blanketing the entire building. Our Jay Coles talked exclusively with the first firefighters on the scene, and he joins us now more with their stories. Jess, there's only one fire truck here still on the scene, but what these firefighters did earlier today was truly remarkable. They were kind enough to share their stories with us today, and what you're about to hear from them is truly extraordinary. They knew this was not going to be a routine fire from the beginning. There are more happens. We got more uh, victims around. We probably got about six victims. People are jumping out of windows now. Each one told us they had never seen anything like it before. We had uh, victims hanging from the second floor window. Uh, it was just. Like I said, like a, like a war zone. When I got off the rig, I saw a patient uh, that was actually that had already jumped out the second floor. Uh, that person did not have any legs. There was a lot of fire coming out of the second and third story windows. There was a lot of debris in the street. And the first thing I saw was a gentleman hanging out of the window. An officer had a guy in the back that looked maybe, that maybe took a shotgun blast of glass to the face, and he was pretty beat up. The one guy that we took down, he was sitting at the edge of the window. He was going to jump, and he, and he, but he's, he was kind of in shock, and he kind of pulled his, his whole arm, the first layer of skin up like a glove. Captain Joe Madison tells us his crew's training immediately took over. At the moment, Jay, you're not thinking. You, you're, you're just reacting to what's in front of you. And they put their lives right in the middle of the flames. We had firefighters knowing that they needed to go inside that building. With the volume of fire that there was, they needed to get inside there and search for any victims. And that's exactly what they did without any worry about their own safety. We uh, risk a lot to save a lot. And that was one of those situations where we, we just went to work and folks were uh, throwing up ladders, entering a, a building and searching for victims. Risk a lot to save a lot, as you just heard from those firefighters. Truly amazing, and they were very brave in the face of danger. And we take a lot of this for granted. In 2012, we checked 
The fire department had 37,000 calls they responded to in 2013. That number went up to over 40,000. Reporting live in Minneapolis, Jay Coles, 5 Eyewitness News. Well, we know at least 10 of the victims were rushed to Hennepin County Medical Center in Minneapolis, and that is where 5 Eyewitness News reporter Joe Mason is live tonight, continuing our team coverage. Joe? Jessica, it's been a long and difficult day for many here, and that includes a young boy we met earlier today. He surprised his family member is still alive. The victims of this tragedy are from this community. They are from this neighborhood. In the sea of people at a news conference standing right next to the Minneapolis fire chief, there he was, 12-year-old Ishmael Mohammed, waiting for answers. It's like, it's stressful. Stressful because his 35-year-old cousin called this building home, and he barely escaped the blaze. I heard like he has like uh, his, um, he has a broken leg and like um, I think his stomach got burnt from the fire. Once Ishmael's mother got a phone call telling her about the fire, the two rushed to Hennepin County Medical Center where their cousin was taken, but they were told they couldn't see him. They said that he's in critical condition so like nobody can like talk to him. So then they came here to see this to see what was left of their cousin's home. It was unbelievable. I, I, like, my, I, got, I, got, I got stunned when I saw it because I was like, how could someone survive from that? And I'm kind of happy that they survived because like the whole building looks like it got burnt down. This is a Minneapolis tragedy. This is a Minnesota tragedy. And that's what brought this 12-year-old to this news conference to find out exactly what caused the fire. It's a question we are all waiting to be answered. Ishmael says he is praying that his cousin will survive along with all the other victims here. Live in downtown Minneapolis, Joe Mason, 5 Eyewitness News.